Good afternoon, everyone. First, I would like to thank uh, Professor Natalia, who kindly invited me to present a lecture about the common problems on clinical immunology with a focus on primary immunodeficiency diseases. So uh, in this uh, lecture, I'm pl planning to present about the classification of primary immunodeficiency diseases, about the general clinical manifestations, about the genetic defects, and an approach to patients with uh, primary immunodeficiency diseases. So I should list uh, some common disorders in the immune system, like hypersensitivity disorders, like allergic diseases, asthma, yeah. and uh, several uh, allergic reactions in different organs, uh, different autoimmune diseases, which could be classified as hypersensitivity two to four, uh, immunodeficiency disorders, which could be either primary or secondary, and transplantation and complication of transplantation like GVHT. So these are the most common uh, disorders of the clinical immunology. But today I'm planning to discuss about uh, primary immunodeficiency diseases, which could also, also be named as inborn errors of immunity. So inborn errors of immunity or primary immunodeficiency diseases are a heterogeneous, heterogeneous group of disorders. It means that we have uh, more than 400 different types of PIDs, but uh, in one side, we have uh, a milder form of disease like selective IgA deficiency with uh, only low level of IgA, but IgG and IgM uh, is normal. Many patients, uh, many individuals with selective IgA deficiency could be asymptomatic without any symptom. And those who are suffering from some symptoms, uh, they, they uh, suffer from uh, upper respiratory tract infection, pneumonia, and diarrhea. In another side, we have, uh, there is another disorder like severe combined immunodeficiencies, a skid severe combined immunodeficiency, which is a severe disease with low number of T cells and the patients usually cannot see their first birthday. So it's a very severe form with no T cell. So this is a heterogeneous group of disorder from selective IgA deficiency to severe combined immunodeficiency. And there are more than 400 disorders between two sides. In primary immunodeficiency diseases, uh, there is a gene defect which leads to a defect in uh, immune system and leads to uh, uh, different clinical manifestations like infections, autoimmunity, and malignancies. Infections could be frequent, chronic, or severe, or infection with unusual organism. To approach to patients with uh, inborn levels of immunity, we should have suspicious based on the warning sign. We should check the past medical history, family history, and then do physical examination. And finally, there is a need to perform some screening test and some sophisticated test. So to have an approach to patients with uh, inborn levels of immunity or primary immunodeficiency diseases, there are 10 warning signs. The first one is increased susceptibility to infection. It means uh, an individual with, uh, I mean, a uh, higher frequency of infection per year. For example, two or more than two times sinusitis per year, two or more than two times pneumonia per year, two or more than two times uh, any severe infection. We should be suspicious about uh, primary immunodeficiency diseases. The second one is increased severity of common infection. So we do not expect uh, primary immunodeficiency diseases in a child with common cold. But if, uh, if an infection leads to hospitalization and antibiotic therapy, we could make suspicious to primary immunodeficiency diseases. The third one is infection with unusual organisms like pneumocystis urochis, psoracea, uh, nocardia, aspergillosis. So we do not expect uh, a healthy immune system suffer from such kind of unusual uh, infections. Number four is FTT or failure to survive from early infancy. Number five is unusual reaction uh, following vaccination, for example, a patient who is, uh, uh, I mean, uh, vaccinated with OPV or poliovirus get, get poliomyelitis, or a patient who is vaccinated with uh, BCG 
is complicated with disseminated BCGF. So we do not expect such kind of complication in those patients. Number six is uh, unresponsive or treatment which needs intravenous antibiotics, not uh, regular antibiotics. Number seven is autoimmune or autoinflammatory diseases. So there is a common disease which you know, uh, FMF, familial Mediterranean fever, which the patients usually have uh, recurrent fever, recurrent abdominal pain, some rushes in different in, in the cutaneous uh, system. And this is the prototype, but there are more than uh, three, uh, 30 different diseases in category of disease like PFAPA, like TRAPS. And there is a, a disease which we name early onset IBD, inflammatory bowel disease in, uh, uh, I mean, IBD like Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis at infancy. And this is because of IL-10 or IL-10 receptor deficiency and these patients need bone marrow transplantation. So there is a need to make the definite diagnosis in this patient. Number eight is some characteristic feature which we name syndrome, some syndromic immunodeficiencies like Dijon syndrome, like Chediakigashi syndrome, Grishali syndrome type two, viscot artery syndrome. So, other, so there are uh, some, some different phenotypes in different organs, which we could name as syndromic features of primary immunodeficiency diseases. Number nine is angioedema in a patient with C1 inhibitor deficiency. This is the complement deficiency, which leads to some kind of angioedema. And last but not least, family story of the current infection or death in the families, which is uh, important, especially in the region with high rate of consanguinity, related marriage in the family. So if you see a patient uh, who has a history of death in the sibling, we should make some suspicious uh, about uh, PID in the family. There are different clinical features in different PIDs. For example, in the patient with antibody deficiency, the patient usually suffer from infections in, with encapsulated bacteria, infections like sinusitis, otitis media, pneumonia, due to a streptococcus pneumonia or hemophilus influenza. They also, uh, they might also suffer uh, from some complication like bronchiectasy because of uh, recurrent pneumonia. Diarrhea could be seen, uh, I mean, as a more common manifestation due to Giardia lamblia in the patient with antibody deficiency. And if we check the immunoglobulin level, we will see that they have low level of antibody and uh, the patient with antibody deficiency usually have uh, the poor, uh, have good prognosis, despite the patient with T cell deficiency has very poor prognosis. The patient with T cell defects they have uh, oral candidiasis, diarrhea, FTT from early infancy. They have gross retardation and they have uh, opportunistic infection with pneumocystis gyrovici, candida albicans, CMV, EBV and they also point to uh, complication with BCG, like disseminated BCG. And as I mentioned, they have poor survival. The next group is uh, phagocyte defects. In the patient with phagocytic defects, they usually suffer from some abscesses in different organs, like uh, subcutaneous abscess, lymph node uh, abscess, lymphadenitis, uh, lymphadenopathy. Uh, lung abscess and liver abscess could be seen uh, frequently in the patient with phagocyte defect. And they also suffer from some uh, infection with Staphylococcus, uh, Pseudomona, E. coli, and some fungi like aspergillosis. So there are some other disorders like uh, uh, LAD, lymphocyte antigen deficiency, that they usually uh, uh, face delayed separation of umbilical cord and poor. Uh, uh, impaired uh, wound healing. So th these are some common manifestation of the phagocyte defect. And the last group is complement deficiency. So if you remember the complement cascade at the end of the complement cascade, we have C5 to C9, which we name a MAC. And if the patient has, uh, if any patient has defect in, uh, in the MAC, C5 to C9, they usually suffer from Neisseria meningitis and they, the, the patient with the complement deficiency also suffer from some autoimmune diseases. And as I mentioned earlier, angioedema could also be seen in patients with C1 inhibitor deficiency. 
So these, uh, I just, I mean, mentioned some points, some general features of the primary immunodeficiency diseases. And as I mentioned earlier, there is a need to uh, check the past medical history uh, in the patients who are suspicious to PID. For example, if a patient come to the clinic with increased frequency of infection uh, in respiratory tract or gastrointestinal system with encapsulated bacteria, we should make suspicious to humoral defect, either antibody deficiency or complement deficiency. If any patient with uh, some kind of uh, opportunistic infection suffer from opportunistic infection like pneumocystis uveitis, we should make suspicious to uh, some T cell defects, uh, either the quantity or quality, like a skid severe combinium deficiency as low number of T cells, or the quality, like the hyper IgM syndrome, X-linked form of hyper IgM syndrome due to CD40 ligand deficiency. The patients who are suffering from aspergillus pneumonia or uh, some uh, fungal infection, uh, the fungal infection, we should make suspicious to some uh, phagocyte defect like neutropenia, severe neutropenia, or chronic granulomatous disease, uh, which is the phagocytic defect, CGD, uh, abscesses uh, and neutropenia, uh, could, could also be seen in some other diseases, as I mentioned earlier, impaired wound healing and uh, delay in separation of umbilical cord could make uh, suspicious to LAD or leukocyte antigen deficiency. And we have also some mycobacterial infection or BCG complication in those who are suffering from IL-12 interferon gamma axis uh, interleukin uh, inter, uh, uh, 20C pathway defects. So the patient uh, with uh, PIDs could also suffer from some autoimmune diseases like uh, ITP, autoimmune thrombocytopenic purpura, autoimmune hemolytic anemia, SLE, uh, juvenile idiopathic arthritis, uh, sclerosing cholangitis, and vasculitis. So they, uh, I mean, there are, there are a number of uh, disorders with PIDs who are suffering from some diseases like IgA deficiency, CVID, CGD, viscot artery syndrome, and some other disorders which all suffer from some autoimmune diseases. Indeed, there are some uh, PIDs who are suffering from cancers like CVID, autoimmune lymphoproliferative syndrome, ALPS, XLP, immunoglobulin class switch combination deficiency and DNA repair defect like ataxic langectasia and niche major breakage syndrome. The patient with PIDs could also suffer from uh, some allergic diseases. I can mention some, uh, some diseases like hyper IgE syndrome, IPEX, immunodeficiency, polyendocrinopathy and uh, enteropathy, viscot artery syndrome and omen syndrome. After checking the uh, past medical history, there is a need to do physical examination. For example, if a patient has uh, absent of tonsil or paucity of the lymphoid tissue, we should uh, make suspicious to XLA, X-linked lymphoproliferative syndrome. Some patients with uh, antibody deficiency uh, usually suffer from some uh, recurrent otitis media, which leads to a scrape uh, and uh, perforated uh, tympan. Some patients like Dijon syndrome uh, suffer from some characteristic feature like cleft palate uh, and some AST axial septal defect. The patient with pneumodeficiency and f kappa B essential modulator uh, deficiencies uh, are suffering from coniform teeth, as you can see at the top of this slide. There are ectoderma dysplasia, and you can see uh, coniform teeth in this patient. Uh, some uh, skin abscess leads to some uh, scars, leads to some neutrophil defects. Chronic periodontitis uh, and gingival stomatitis could make suspicious to some phagocyte defect like LAD leukocyte antigen deficiency. A skeletal dysplasia with pancreatic insufficiency could make suspicious to some uh, other disorders like Schwachmann diamond syndrome. Telangiectasia in uh, bulbar, uh, bulbar conjunctiva and also a toxic gate 
uh, lead us to ataxia to laryngectasia. And chronic eczema delayed shedding of primary teeth and some fracture uh, of, uh, I mean, bone fracture uh, could make the suspicions of hyper IG syndrome. Silvery hair, eyelash, eyebrow, pale skin, and photophobia could make the suspicions to Chedia Kigashi syndrome. And severe eczema could be seen in some uh, PIDs like IPEX, immunodeficiency, polyendocrinopathy, and entropathy and Viscot Aldrich syndrome. So physical examination is very important to make the diagnosis of primary immunodeficiency diseases. Some of PIDs are suffering uh, from microcephalia, like Dijon syndrome, Nijmegen-Berikic syndrome, Kernanus deficiency, DNA ligase 4 deficiency, and <coughs> Lugatman syndrome. And you can see a patient with Nijmegen Bikesh syndrome who has a DNA repair defect, and you can see the, the short station and macrocephaly uh, in this patient. A skeletal manifestation could also be seen in hyper IG syndrome, other deficiencies, Schwachmann Diamond syndrome, and Tarsilis hypoplasia. And you can see the, the, the slide uh, which shows uh, a patient with hyper IG syndrome with coarse face and some skeletal manifestation. And uh, the patient also has some uh, deformity in the nose and uh, coarse face. Oculocutanus hyperpigmentation or partial albinism could be seen in uh, six PIDs like Chedia Kigashi syndrome, Gishali syndrome type 2, Hemansi Padlak syndrome type 2. P4 gene deficiency, palidine deficiency, and VC syndrome. In this slide, the left one is a patient with Chediakigashi syndrome, and the right one is a case with Grishali syndrome type 2. <coughs> so after checking the, after uh, doing the physical examination and checking the clinical phenotypes, there is a need to do some, uh, some uh, uh, screening test and immunological test to make the diagnosis. So the first screening test to make the diagnosis is CBC, complete blood cell count, which is very simple, cheap, and easy access test. If a patient has uh, neutropenia, we could make suspicious to severe congenital neutropenia. If the patient has severe lymphopenia, we could make a suspicious to a skid severe combined immune deficiency. And if the patient has a thrombocytopenia, we could uh, make a suspicious to viscot Aldrich syndrome. For, to, to exclude uh, antibody deficiency, we should measure the immunoglobulin level like IgG, IgA, IgM, and IgE by ELISA or nephilometry. We could check the B cell function by checking the specific antibody production or isohemagglutin title. And uh, we could also uh, uh, count the B cell number by flow cytometry by fax study to check the CD19, CD20, or CD21 uh, B cell number. To check the T cell number, we will check the CD3 positive uh, cells, which could be either CD4 or CD8 positive. Uh, we could check uh, NK cell number by checking uh, CD16 and CD56. And to check the functional, uh, uh, that the functional, I mean, to, to, to do the functional study of the cellular mediated immunity, we should uh, perform delay type hypersensitivity a skin test, which is the type four hypersensitivity. For the phagocytosis, we could uh, do NBT, nitroblutetrazodium test, and DHR, dehydrolodamine test, which is the gold standard to make the diagnosis of CGD. We could check chemotaxis test to exclude LAD, leukocyte antigen deficiency, and then checking the CD11 and CD18 for LAD as well. And for the complement deficiency, we could check uh, uh, CH50 for the classical pathway of the complement or AH50 for alternative pathway. And C1 inhibitor could be assessed and C, C3, C4 uh, for, for checking the complement. Uh, cascade could also be measured. So I just completed my uh, the, the first part of my lecture about the clinical features and immunological studies of the primary immunodeficiency diseases. And now I'm planning to discuss about the classifications of primary immunodeficiency diseases or inborn errors of immunity. But before moving forward to, to this section, if you have uh, 
any specific question, I would be more than happy to answer. As you know, uh, I mean, the, the, the one of the advantage of the virtual presentation is just presenting from anywhere to for any audiences in any country. But one of the disadvantage is lack of interaction. So I cannot make any eye contact with you. So I cannot see you. So it's difficult to uh, get the point if you are following my points or not. So we have, uh, I can stop for two or three minutes. If you have any specific question, I would be more than happy to answer. And if not, I will go ahead with classification of inborn errors of immunity. Do you have any question? No, thank you, teacher. No, we don't have. Is it okay? Yes, we understand. Yes, teacher. Shall I continue? Yes, please. Okay, so. Let's move on to classification of primary immunodeficiency diseases. And it's, uh, uh, I mean, uh, a little bit complicated. As I mentioned, there are more than 400 different diseases. And uh, if I just plan to name these diseases, it took, I, I think it takes two hours to, to complete uh, naming these diseases. But I just simplified the classification by, uh, I mean, a step to a step, uh, a step by a step approach to the PIDs in eight categories of diseases. And please follow with me. And I just, uh, I mean, make a circle red to those who are more common and important to uh, be realized. The first group is combined immunodeficiency. So, as I mentioned, if the patient has severe lymphopenia, we could think about a skid, severe combined immunodeficiency. And then we will do B cell, T cell, and NK cell enumeration. So let's move on. So if the patient has lymphopenia, the patient has a skid or severe combined immunodeficiency. As I mentioned, they have a very poor prognosis. And if the patient has a T minus, I mean low number of T, but normal number of B cell, we could think about the gamma chain deficiency. But if the patient has low number of T cell and low number of B cell, we could think about lag one and lag two deficiency. And if a patient has T minus, B minus, and NK minus, we could think about ADA or PMP deficiency, adenosine deaminase or purine nucleotid phosphatase. But if a patient has no lymphopenia, so it could have, I mean, the patient could have uh, some kind of combined immunodeficiency like Dijon syndrome. And as you know, this is the syndrome. So the patient has AST, eight cell septal defect. The patient has hypocalcemia. They have thymic defect. You cannot see the thymus shadow in X-ray and they have cleft palate uh, as some, uh, uh, some uh, coincidence uh, uh, manifestation in the patient with Dijon syndrome. And uh, let's move on. And there is another group of disorder which we name hyper IgM syndrome. They have defect in immunoglobulin class switch recombination. So IgM cannot class switch to IgG and IgA. So IgM is getting high, but IgG and IgA is getting low. So this is hyper IgM syndrome and CD40 ligand, which is a uh, deficiency, which is the X-linked disease and needs bone mass transplantation is one of these disorder. The second group of disorder is predominant anti-antibody deficiency. They have low IgG, IgM and IgA. So if, the, if, a, if a patient has low IgG, IgA and IgM, we should move forward with B cell number. If a patient has low number of B cell, we, could think, we should think about XLA, X-link, A gamma globulinemia. It means low number of B cells and low IgG, IgM, and IgA. So the mutation is BTK, boloton tyrosine kinase. But if a patient has normal number of B cells, we could think about CVID, common variable immunodeficiency. Another group of disorder is LRBA deficiency, which is a combine, and again with low number of uh, low level of IgG and IgA and IgM. If a patient has normal IgM or increased IgM and low IgA and IgG, we should think about hyper IgM syndrome. And if a patient has 
only IgA deficiency, I mean, IgG and IgM is normal, but IgA is low. We could mention selective IgA deficiency, just, I mean, only uh, low uh, IgA level. The group three is the congenital defects of phagocyte, and we could perform a simple uh, CBC, complete blood cell count. And if the patient has uh, low uh, absolute neutrophil count, uh, we say that the patient has neutropenia. And neutropenia could be syndromic or no syndromic. So if the patient has uh, no syndromic feature, the patient could have uh, severe congenital neutropenia or cyclic neutropenia. But if the patient has normal number of neutrophil, we should check DHR or MBT, as I mentioned earlier, to exclude CGD, chronic granulomatous disease. Or if the patient has normal MBT or DHR test, the patient could have LAD, leukocyte antigen deficiency, which is the beta-2 integrin deficiency. So these three groups are the main groups of PIDs. Group four is the effects of uh, immune dysregulation. Uh, I can mention some, some of these disorders like HLH with hypopigmentation. As I mentioned, uh, Chediakigashi syndrome and Griselli syndrome type two are two most common disorders in this group of disorders with oculocutanous hypopigmentation. Another group is ALPS, autoimmune lymphoproliferative syndrome. The patients usually have splenomegaly, adenopathy, and defective lymphocyte apoptosis. Another group is EBV-associated lymphoproliferation like XLP, X-link lymphoproliferative syndrome. Next group is defects of innate immunity. And in this group of disorder, uh, any severe infection, uh, we should think about a gene defect like herpes simplex encephalitis, which is now clear that there are seven gene defects which is associated with herpes simplex encephalitis or MSMD, Mendelian susceptibility to mycobacterial disease. So there are uh, different genes which predispose individual to mycobacterial infections. Next group is autoinflammatory disorders. As I mentioned earlier, FMF or familial Mediterranean fever is a prototype of this group of disorders, but we should be very careful about other disorders of this group like early onset IBD. And as I mentioned, IL-10 and IL-10 receptor deficiency leads to early onset IBD. The next group is complement deficiency. And if the patient has, uh, I mean, increased susceptibility to infection, we should think about C5 to C9 uh, defects, and if the patient has uh, susceptibility to susceptibility to uh, SLE, uh, systemic uh, lupus erythematosus, or uh, other autoimmune diseases, we should think about C1Q deficiency, C1R, and C4 deficiency. And the last group is other well-defined syndrome. So I can mention some disorders like DNA repair, DNA repair defects, like ataxia telangiectasia or uh, another disorder like hyper IgE syndrome, which could be uh, either uh, autosomal dominant like a satry or autosomal recessive like DAC8 deficiency. And viscot Aldrich syndrome as a patient with uh, thrombocytopenia, a small size platelet, eczema, lymphoma, and some autoimmune diseases. Okay, so I, finished my second part of my lecture. And now I'm planning to discuss about two cases. If you have any specific question about uh, the classification of PID, I would be more than happy to answer. Any question? No, teacher, everything is clear. Are you sure? I'm planning to ask you some question. I mean, in this step, uh, I will ask the, the, the faculty uh, members and the students, residents who are, I mean, hearing this lecture to answer my question. So are you sure that everything is clear? Yes. Okay. I think you are the only person who are responding to me. So you should answer all of my question. Okay. Mm -hmm. The first case is a girl from consanguineous parent with history of recurrent episodes of rhinosinusitis, otitis media. She had a history of several episodes of pneumonia since one year old. 
she was referred to our clinic with extensive fungal infection leading to necrosis of nasal cartilage. You can see the, the, the uh, I mean, the nasal cartilage necrosis of this girl. Do you know which kind of infection leads to such manifestation? Any suggestion? Cryptococcus fungi? What? What? Cryptococcus fungi? It's fungi, but not cryptococcus. Because it says necrosis of the nasal cartilage, so I thought so. You mentioned cryptococcus, am I right? Yeah. No, no. It's 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 mucal mycosis. I mean, this is the severe infection, I... as you know. This is mucal mycosis. So mucal my mycosis could uh, destroy the nasal cartilage. So the patient referred to our center at the age of nine with mucal mycosis uh, infection. So my first question, which laboratory test should be requested at the first step to make the diagnosis? Brian, A, B, C, D. Which one? A teacher. What? A? Answer A, yes. A. D. Okay. Are you all agree with A? I think D. D, you are right. The first screening test for all PIDs is CBC. Please do not forget it. So we checked CBC, and if you have a look at this table, you can see that the absolute neutrophil count is less than 500. So you can see the white PC and then polymorphonuclear, 10%, 5 to 4%. And the absolute neutrophil count is less than 500. It means the patient has what? Neutropenia. Exactly. Severe congenital neutropenia. So the first, uh, I mean, uh, suspicious based on the CBC is severe congenital neutropenia. So please do not forget that there is no need to do genetic studies or sophisticated tests at the first step. CBC is the first screening test for immunodeficiency. But what was the difference between, sorry? Alexandra, I kindly ask you to turn off your microphone, oh, yeah. please. Okay, okay, sorry. Okay, so the, what was the difference between uh, severe congenital neutropenia, leukocyte adhesion deficiency, and CGD, chronic granulomatous disease? Please have a look at this slide. This is bone marrow, the left side, and poor myelocyte should match to myelocyte and then match to neutral field in the circulation. So if we have arrest at poor myelocyte to myelocyte at bone marrow, what is your expectation in the circulation? We have arrest at poor myelocyte to myelocyte. myelocyte. We do not expect neutral field in the circulation. So this, this, this leads to severe congenital neutropenia. So this is the cause of severe congenital neutropenia. Again, consider, please consider that, uh, imagine that we have enough neutrophil in the circulation, but neutrophil cannot move in the circulation. For example, I have a skin lesion, but the, the neutrophil cannot move because of defect in beta, beta 2 integrin. So the, the lesion cannot be healed, okay? So the name of disease is leukocyte adhesion deficiency. So they have defects in adhesion of leukocyte to the, uh, uh, in, the, in the circulation. Again, imagine that we have enough neutrophil, neutrophil can move in the circulation, do the diabetes and get the pathogen inside, but cannot digest it. So what will be happen? The neutrophil as the macrophage as other immune cell that help the macrophage and other immune cell come and make a granulome. So this is chronic granulomatous disease or CGD. So at the left, this is severe congenital neutropenia. Here is leukocyte adhesion deficiency. And the third one 
is CGD or chronic granulomatous disease. So the second take home message is understanding the pathophysiology of PIDs is very important. There is no need to memorize every gene defect or every clinical phenotype. If you know the pathophysiology, you can uh, guess the clinical phenotypes as well. So after, in this case, that the patient has severe congenital neutropenia, we checked the bone marrow and we found that the patient has maturation errors at the myeloid differentiation. And then we did the genetic test and we found that the patient has HAX1 deficiency. So this is the paper that we published uh, uh, 10 years ago about uh, this case. And uh, we should consider we should uh, consider the region that the patient was uh, coming to our center. For example, Elaine or ILA2 mutation is more common in Ukraine because the the, the rate of uh, relative marriages is low. But Hax1 is more common in in the Middle East region because of high rate of consanguinity. So if a patient is come to the clinic, we should check the consanguinity of marriages and if the, I mean, marriage in the same ethnicity is happen or not, and then check the relative uh, gene defect in the family. So there are several gene defects in congenital defects, in congenital neutropenia like ILA2, GFI1, HAX1, VPS45, JAGM1, G6PC3. And this is uh, one of the paper that uh, I had the chance to be a part of this project. This is dated back to about uh, 14 years ago when we discovered the HAX1 gene in the uh, family with Kostman disease. Kostman disease or Kostman syndrome was described in 1956 uh, by Dr. Kostman in Sweden, but the gene defect was discovered five decades later. Uh, which was published in the Nature Genetic. And it was, I mean, impossible if we did not perform a, an international collaboration. That's why I would like to highlight the importance of international collaboration to, to solve the, uh, I mean, unanswered question and, uh, uh, I mean, help the patient. This is another paper which we published uh, six years ago about the JAGM1, uh, again, to Nature Genetic, uh, and other gene defects in congenital neutropenia. And we realized that the patient with neutropenia could also suffer from some other infections like uh, neurological disorders or epilepsy, convulsion. And we found that, for example, this patient has a stop codon mutation in HAX1. And later on, we realized that the HAX1 has two transcript. And if, uh, I mean, one transcript is involved, it leads to neutropenia. But if the patient has involvement of two transcript, it leads to some uh, extra hematopoietical manifestation like epilepsy and convulsion. So my first take home message is there are some genotype, phenotype association in some PIDs, which should be carefully assessed to translate bench to bedside. This is a picture from, uh, I mean, one of uh, my old patient who had a mutation in ILA2, Elastas2 or Elaine, and the patient has severe congenital neutropenia. At the moment, there was no hope, less hope to, to survive the case, but later on, we realized that we could, I mean, survive this patient, and you can see that the patient is getting old enough to go to the university. And uh, we control the infection with GCSF, granulocyte colonial stimulating factor. So there is no need to, uh, I mean, uh, make bone mass transplantation for all the patients with neutropenia. We should see the condition of the patient and then decide the treatment protocol. So in this slide, you can see the, the, the patients, I mean, the diseases which needs bone mass transplantation and the green one are those who do not need uh, bone mass transplantation. So as I mentioned, there is no need to, to, to perform transplantation for all the patients with severe congenital neutropenia and other voices for GCSF or HSCT should be decided uh, based on the individual's condition. Okay, uh, the next case. So I, I actually plan to present four cases, but uh, later on decided to cut and uh, just uh, limit my lecture to two cases. If we, uh, I mean, decide to continue uh, my lectures in the future, I can present more cases with more PIDs and other, I mean, autoimmune diseases or allergic diseases to discuss about them. But for today, because I mean the, uh, I mean what I mentioned is, uh, I mean about the whole primary immune deficiency. I decided to 
uh, I mean, uh, I mean, cut my cases and limited to two cases. Okay, this one is a six months old infant with lymphadenopathies, uh, lymphadenitis, oral candidiasis, and multifocal uh, osteolytic lesion. The patient has respiratory distress, hepatomegaly, the parents were consanguine, and the first child of the family died because of disseminated Bessage. CBC showed lymphopenia. You can see that the patient has leukopenia and lymphopenia. So to make the diagnosis, uh, which uh, laboratory test would you recommend? Could you please help me to make the, uh, I mean, to advise for the best diagnostic test? The first one is immunoglobulin level and B cell, T cell enumeration. B is NBT or HR, C is chemotaxi and CD11 and CD18. And last one is complement assay. Immunoglobulin levels. Exactly. So the patient has lymphopenia. So we have some suspicious to some kind of combined immunodeficiency and we should check immunoglobulin level and B cell T cell enumeration. So we checked it. And let's see, IgG is low. You can see the normal range. IgM is low. IgA is also low. What is the B cell number? What is the situation? Mm. The normal range is nine to 38, but the patient has two person. You mean brought on? No, 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 I mean- Very low number. Uh, B cell is low, okay? B cell is low. I'm not uh, discussing about the diagnosis. I'm just asking about the, I mean, the percentage of the B cell. So B cell is low. What about the T cell? No. T cell is uh, also low. Also what about low. the NK cell? No. Uh, normal times. Uh, okay. Uh, so the patient has low immunoglobulin level, low B cell, low T cell, but increased number of NK cell. What is the most likely diagnosis? CVID, hyper IgM, XLA, or a skid? Severe combined immunodeficiency? Exactly. D, D a skid, severe combined immunodeficiency, because in CVID, we do not expect low number of B cell and T cell, so it's incorrect. Both of them. In hyper IgM, IgM should be high, but IgG and IgA should be low. In this patient, all were low. Okay, so it's incorrect. And in Bolton or XLA, B cell is low, but T cell is in BTK deficiency or XLA. B cell is low, but T cell is normal. So we, we do not see any kind of T cell deficiency in XLA. So the diagnosis of the patient is a skid because in a skid patient, T is low. B cell or NK cell could be low or normal, okay? So the patient has disseminated BCG, hypogamma, and decreased number of B cell and T cell, and the diagnosis of T minus, B minus, NK positive skid could be made for this patient. But which gene mutation could be responsible for this phenotype? Please have a look at this uh, diagram. You can see that the stem cell mature to pro T cell, pre T cell, and mature T cell, and in this side, pro B cell, pre B cell, and B, mature B cell, okay? So which gene would you expect the mutation in this case? So D, RAG2. 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 RAG2, what else? Uh, Do you expect gamma chain? Uh, yes, Ma maybe. Uh, uh, no, 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 no. Why, Why, no? Why, no? Also. Why no? Gamma yeah. chain is here. Uh, yes, yes, because of B cell. The exactly. B cell is normal. Because gamma chain is here. So if we have, uh, I mean, mutation in gamma chain, we have a low number of B, uh, low number of T cells, but B cells are normal. Is it clear? Okay, but there is two causes, like also it's more often to see the skid, this one, it's due to the T cell. We, it's true, mm -hmm. we will see a skid. I mean, if we see a mutation in gamma chain, we see a skid, but this is T minus B positive skid. B cell function is different, I mean, uh, is- I, I is mean, also B cells, it's activated also based on T cells. 
Okay. It's okay. I don't know if, if it's number, hypothesis or not. No, no, this is the hypothesis, but Bissell number is quite normal. We do not, I mean, we do not have absent Bissell. Okay, because gamma chain is here, so we will see no T cell, but there is some B cells, but cannot, I mean, function very well. Okay, but in like one and like two, you can see like one and like two is here as the, the lady mentioned, and like one as like two is here. So in two sides, so we, we see low B cell, low T cell, a skid. And for BTK, what is the, what is the uh, disease? Um, uh, uh, gamma -globinemia. XLA. BTK is here, so they have low number of B cells, but T cells are normal. So this is antibody deficiency, not combining with deficiency. And CD40 ligand is responsible for which disease? Hyper IgM syndrome. Exactly, perfect, brilliant. Hyper IgM syndrome, CD40 ligand. IgM cannot match you to, I mean, cannot class switch to IgG and IgA. So it leads to hyper IgM syndrome. Perfect. Okay, so this is the, the, the table which shows that different uh, uh, phenotype, immunophenotyping of a skid. And this patient has homozygous mutation of like two mutation. So why I mentioned this case? Because the first child of this family died because of like two mutation. And I mean, one of the research lab performed, uh, I mean, perinatal diagnosis, but they, I mean, wrongly checked the gamma chain because in your textbook, it has mentioned that gamma chain is the most common form. This is the extinct form of a skid, but we should not read the book and do, I mean, the test for the patient. We should just, I mean, realize the clinical and the lab data and then decide. So if the patient, the first child, died because of T minus, B minus. We should think about these genes, not gamma chain, and then do the perinatal diagnosis. We usually perform perinatal diagnosis at the, uh, I mean, at the week of 10 to 12, to do the CBS and check the mutation, but we should perform the correct genetic test to make the diagnosis. So it highlights again the translational study from the bench to bedside and back again, because the basic scientists and clinical scientists need each other. They need to, uh, I mean, collaborate with each other to make the diagnosis. And this is the paper that we published a few years ago regarding this case. Okay, so uh, I'm planning to end my lecture. Uh, before ending my lecture, uh, I would like to, to show you some of the references. The first one is primary immunodeficiency diseases, which is the textbook of uh, clinical immunology in the Western country, in the United States and the uh, European countries, those who are uh, planning to be the pediatric, pedi pediatric immunologists and allergists, they should read this book, but I, would, uh, I do not emphasize as this, uh, I mean, book has been written by my colleagues and I. Uh, I just, I mean, uh, advise it as a, a text for those who are interested to know more about primary deficiency diseases. The first edition of this book was published uh, 10 years ago, and it was only 150 diseases. But in second edition, more than 300 diseases were covered. It means that the number of PIDs has been increased twice in less than one decade. It shows that how much important that we keep ourselves updated. Another book which was published uh, uh, last year, this is the Pediatric Immunology and this is based on MCQs, multiple case question. And it has, I think, uh, more than 900 page pages with more than 200 cases. For anyone who is interested to know more about uh, cases of PIDs, you could also read this book. And this is the new book, which uh, we published just uh, a couple of weeks ago in Bonus of Immunity. Uh, the first two was published by Springer Nature and the last one by Elsevier. And there are uh, different books that we are editing at the moment, which should be very published very soon in 2021 and 2022. If anyone is interested, we would be more than happy to have your manuscript or cases in this book as well. Uh, we have a network, as Professor Natalia mentioned, we have the user network. And uh, we have two uh, network inside this network, PID net, primary immunodeficiency disease network, and network for immunity, infection, malignancy, and autoimmunity. And the website is usan.net. So if any of you is interested, you could be a member of this network, which is free for all. 
for all the scientists and you could be a, a member of this uh, uh, website, this network. And if you have access to the uh, Telegram, uh, uh, Telegram uh, social media, Telegram Messenger, you could uh, also, uh, uh, I mean, follow all of the activities via the Telegram as well. So Yusan underline net and Nima underline Yusan uh, are the Telegram channel. The Nima underline Yusan uh, is the English channel. And uh, I mean, broadcast some uh, news about uh, immunology and primary immunodeficiency diseases. Finally, I would like to thank all my junior colleagues who are helping me a lot. Without the help, uh, I mean, I cannot do anything and I highly appreciate everyone who are helping me in the clinic, in the lab, in uh, some executive uh, duties like you said, to make all, uh, I mean, these activities possible. Thank you for your attention. Uh, if you have any specific question, I will be more than happy to answer. We have time to discuss if you have any